viruses. So here's a virus and it's got um, DNA or RNA inside and then it's got this protein coat called a capsid that um, encloses the DNA and in this case the protein also helps to get the um, the DNA inside the cell, inside the host cell, which in this case would be um, a bacterial cell. So a virus is a small infectious, first of all, what does infectious mean? If you are infected, it's um, that there's some pathogenic, there's some virus or bacterium or whatever that's getting inside of you and is going to um, try to replicate and um, make its life inside your body. Um, so that's what infectious means. So a virus is a small infectious thing <laughs> that can replicate only inside living cells. So it cannot replicate when it when you when you have a virus and you sneeze and it goes onto the table or the doorknobs or something. Um, the viruses are not replicating there. They can only replicate inside of you or some other host. So viruses infect all types of organisms. They can infect you like an animal or they can actually infect plants or fungi or protists or either of the types of prokaryotes, the eubacteria or the archaea. In the very beginning of the year, we looked at characteristics of life. How can you tell a living thing from a rock? And so viruses are these weird things because they do have some characteristics of life, but certainly not all of them. So we consider viruses to be non-living, but they really are kind of in an odd place, um, sort of between living and non-living. They're like the natural zombies or something. Anyway, here's why they're non-living. They don't grow. They assemble. So it's sort of like putting together um, a Lego boat or a Lego car or something. You don't start off with a little car and have it grow bigger. You just click the pieces together till you build what you want. And that's really how a virus is put together. They don't take in nutrients or energy and they don't excrete waste. So every living thing excretes waste. Even plants will excrete um, oxygen, for example but viruses don't excrete anything and they are not made of cells and so we define living things as being made out of cells. They also do not have the cellular machinery needed to make copies of their genetic material. So what does cellular machinery mean? That means the ribosomes that you need, it means the um, enzymes that you need, all the stuff that you need to make DNA make more of itself or RNA make more of itself. But viruses do have some characteristics of life, um, and those characteristics only show up when they are inside the host. I should probably define host for you, so find a spot to write host. Host is the guy, you know the host of a party is the person who um, has the party at their house, and everyone can come and have a good time, but it's at the host's house. So a host is the thing that the, um, that the virus lives in, so the organism. that the, should I call it a parasite? Um, I don't know, an, uh, that the infectious agent lives in. So the host is the organism that the infectious thing lives in. I guess we could put on, because you could be a host for like athlete's foot fungus or something and that sort of lives on you maybe more than in you. Anyway, so there are some characteristics of life that these viruses have and so let's look at those. They replicate or reproduce but only when they're inside the host cell. They actually don't have the, the cellular machinery to do it on their own outside of a host cell. They have either DNA or RNA as their genetic material so that's kind of crazy. They can replicate and they have DNA just like you and me and um, mushrooms and plants and all that, but they can only replicate when they're inside of a host cell. And they mutate, so that's one of the huge problems with HIV. So the virus that causes AIDS is actually really, really bad at replicating itself. So that's two strikes against you, because one strike is that it affects your white blood cells, and your white blood cells are the things that should be attacking viruses and other pathogens. But they're not because the, the virus has gone and attacked the white blood cells. The other problem with HIV is it's just really lousy at copying its genetic material. So when it copies its genetic material, it screws up a lot. It makes mutations, which means that it's always changing and it's hard to get a drug that can kill it. Kind of a bummer for us, huh? 
Which of the following characteristics of life do viruses have? They grow, nope. They reproduce, yes, but only inside a host cell. They are made of cells, no. They have DNA as their genetic material. They all have DNA. Nope, only some of them. Whoops, sorry. They excrete waste, no. They take in nutrients, no. They use energy, no. They mutate, yes. What's a host? A host is an organism that a parasite lives inside or on. Hopefully you're pausing this to figure out the answers. Why don't viruses replicate outside of host cells? They are too large. They don't have ribosomes, enough enzymes, nutrients, and other cellular machinery. Or they don't have the mitochondria, chloroplasts, and other membrane-bound organelles. Well, here's the thing. Bacteria don't have mitochondria either, and they do just fine. So the answer here is B. They don't have the ribosomes and all the other stuff, the enzymes that they need um, to replicate. There are viruses that infect which types of living things? Everything. So there's RK. I actually think we just call them RK now, not RK bacteria anymore. Um, you bacteria, yes. Protists, yes. Fungi, yes. Plants, yes. Animals, yes. Bummer for us. Structure of a virus. A virus has either DNA or RNA, so some type of genetic material. Then it has a protein coat on the outside. Sometimes there's another layer, but um, they can be as simple as having some either DNA or RNA with a protein around them. So virus particles are made of two or three parts. The genetic material, which is either going to be DNA or RNA, and you want to pause that to write that in. And then they also have this protein coat. It's called a capsid, sort of like a capsule. Like if you have a pill, a capsule pill, the medicine's inside and the capsule is on the outside. So here's the capsule and the pill, the medicine's in here. The outside is called a capsule. Similar here, the outside is called a capsid. So it's a protein coat that protects the genetic material. The thing with it, let me go backwards a sec, the thing with this is that there's no goop inside. We don't have any cytosol, no organelles, not even ribosomes. All it is is DNA or RNA with a protein around it. So here's an example. Here's the If you look at this tobacco mosaic virus and cut it, here's the RNA, and it's got protein. So the outside of it's protected by this protein. And a tobacco mosaic virus will attack tobacco, which is a plant. Oops. So here's a virus called um, a bacteriophage, and it's got DNA or RNA in here, and it's got protein around the whole rest of it. And if you're thinking that looks a lot like um, a hypodermic needle, you are correct. That's really what the cell use, the virus uses it for. Okay, some of them have this other thing too. So here's the genetic material. Here is the capsid or the protein coat, and some of them get a lipid from the outside of the cell they infected. So in some cases, an envelope of lipids surrounds the protein coat um, when they're outside of the cell. Viruses contain which of the following? Genetic material, yes. Ribosomes, no. Mitochondria, no. Cell wall, no. Protein coat, yep. Lipid covering, sometimes. All of the enzymes needed to replicate, nope. Okay, size of viruses. Here's a red blood cell, and it's 10,000 nanometers, and it's actually not even a big um, cell in your body. It is eukaryotic, because it's in you. Notice that the prokaryote, this bacterium called E. coli, much smaller, right? So you've got an order of magnitude smaller. Um, 3,000 to 1,000 nanometers. The viruses are all smaller than that because really all they are is a little bit of genetic material with a protein around them. So here's Ebola um, that will kill you fast. Let's see, bacteriophages, that's a teeny little one. Here's the polio virus that um, used to be a huge, huge, huge problem and uh, not so much anymore around here. Um, but that can cause you to, um, well, there's a lot of things, but one of the things is it can um, really mess up muscles and the ability to walk, that kind of thing. Here's a tobacco mosaic virus. That's a virus that infects plants, the tobacco plant. Rhinovirus, um, this is an interesting one. That's one that causes um, the colds, I think, common colds. These two are both bacteria, um, rabies. Okay, viewing viruses. Viruses are smaller than the smallest cell because there's not much to them. Viruses couldn't be seen until the electron microscope was invented in the 20th century, so that's sort of amazing. 
virus specificity. Most viruses infect only specific host cells. For example, most viruses that infect human cells can't infect cat cells. Hi, cat. Okay, so this probably isn't even working. <laughs> I don't know if you get to see my cat or not, but that just messed up my recording. All right, enough for now.